Hey guys, welcome to my channel. When you picture iconic infrastructure, what comes to mind? For many in the West, it's the sweeping orange-red cables of the Golden Gate Bridge or the concrete curve of the Hoover Dam monuments of 20th century ambition. But today, a new chapter in engineering history is being written at a speed and scale that is difficult to comprehend. We're turning our focus to China, where a nationwide infrastructure revolution is not just underway, it's accelerating. This isn't just about building, it's about redefining the very limits of what's possible. While many nations debate the renovation of a single bridge, China has already built the world's tallest, suspended between cliffs that rival a 200-story building, while high-speed rail proposals stall in Congresses elsewhere. China is operating a network of 40,000 kilometers more than the rest of the entire world, combined. This isn't science fiction. This is the story of a nation reshaping its landscape, one megaproject at a time. China's geography is dominated by water. Vast atmospheric rivers in the sky deliver moisture from the oceans, feeding over 45,000 rivers. The greatest of these is the Yangtze, a river whose annual runoff is 17 times that of the Yellow River. But this power is a double-edged sword. Uncontrolled, it brings catastrophe. The most famous solution is the Three Gorges Project, one of the world's largest water control systems. At 2.3 kilometers long and 185 meters high, it's a multi-purpose marvel of flood control, power generation, and navigation. Its reservoir can hold a staggering 45 billion cubic meters of water, but the Three Gorges is just the quarterback. It leads a team of over 50 other large reservoirs across the Yangtze watershed. This integrated system, monitored by 30,000 stations and satellites, can empty reservoirs before a flood and strategically release water, cutting the peaks of floods and protecting millions downstream. And what about places with no water? China builds new rivers. The South to North Water Diversion Project is perhaps the most ambitious water transfer in human history. The 1,400-kilometer-long central route acts as a massive gravity-fed aqueduct, moving water from the south to the arid north. Nine years into operation, it has already diverted enough water to fill the entire Yellow River, serving 170 million people in 44 cities. From the ancient hand-carved Honki Canal to modern 98-kilometer tunnels piercing mountains, China is fundamentally replumbing its national landscape. Nowhere is China's ambition more visible than in how it connects its people. The high-speed rail network is the crown jewel. In just over a decade, China built a 40,000-kilometer web that links over 100 cities, serving more than a billion people. Trains like the Fuxing glide across the country at speeds hitting 421 kilometers per hour, with stability, punctuality, and all the core technology developed domestically. This system is now being exported, setting a new global standard. But what about the most extreme geography? The Sichuan Abet Railway is an engineering marvel, crossing one of the planet's most challenging routes. It traverses active fault zones, deep gorges, and snow-capped peaks, battling high altitude, thin air, and extreme weather. Then, there's the challenge of the sea. The Hong Kong Shua Macau Bridge is a 55-kilometer colossus. It links three major cities using a combination of bridges, artificial islands, and a 6.7-kilometer underwater tunnel. This tunnel was built by prefabricating 33 massive sections, each weighing 76,000 tons as much as an aircraft carrier on, sinking them into a trench on the seabed with millimeter-level precision. The project used enough steel to build eight Burj Khalifas, and they are already pushing the boundary further. The Jintang Undersea Tunnel will be the world's longest high-speed rail undersea tunnel. Two massive 15-meter diameter shield machines are boring 11 kilometers under the sea, designed to withstand immense pressure and navigate complex geology. Guided by China's own Beidou satellite system, they will meet in the middle with an alignment error of just 2 centimeters. This revolution extends to the skies. 46 kilometers south of Beijing, a new landmark has risen the Beijing Daxing International Airport, shaped like a giant phoenix. Its 1.4 million square meter terminal is one of the largest single structure terminals in the world, but its genius is its efficiency. The five concourse design means it's only an eight minute walk from security to the farthest gate. It's also a fully integrated hub with high speed rail, metro, and intercity lines all running directly underneath the terminal. The entire civil construction was completed in just four years. This connectivity is all powered by a new kind of infrastructure. A vast web of ultra-high voltage UHV transmission lines moves clean energy from wind, solar, and hydro farms in the remote west, to the power-hungry cities in the east. And in the digital age, infrastructure means data. China has rolled out millions of 5G base stations and built its own global navigation system, Beidou. With centimeter-level accuracy, Beidou is the invisible backbone for everything from autonomous driving in smart cities to disaster rescue ensuring China's technological independence. China's engineering isn't just about building up, it's about holding back. For decades, the Taklamakan Desert, China's largest, was expanding, swallowing homes and farmland. Today, that story is changing. After 40 years of effort, a 3,000-kilometer green belt now encircles the desert, 
the longest man-made desert shield on Earth. This was achieved through three models. First, engineering workers lay millions of straw checkerboards to break the wind and stabilize the dunes. Second, biology. Drought-resistant plants are grown, including a desert herb that creates an ecology and economy intertwined. And third, solar power. Massive solar farms are built in the desert, generating clean energy while the panels themselves help anchor the ground against erosion. This is a path from retreat to revival, turning an arid wasteland into a source of ecology, industry, and tourism. This portfolio of mega-projects from the fast telescope listening to the cosmos, to the precision-built Biotin hydropower station is the result of a system that can concentrate resources and execute. As an old Chinese saying goes, to get rich, build roads first. But this speed and scale come at a price, one that sparks intense global debate. These projects are not without significant social and environmental costs. The Three Gorges Dam displaced over a million people and forever altered the Yangtze's ecosystem. The construction of these projects involves massive land acquisition, deforestation, and concerns over pollution and habitat destruction. Furthermore, critics point to a lack of transparency, the exploitation of laborers, and the debt trap concerns associated with global projects like the Belt and Road Initiative. So, as we marvel at the engineering, we must also ask, what is the true cost? Are these projects a new model for human civilization? or a high-stakes gamble with profound consequences for people and the planet. One thing is undeniable. China has shown the world that the future is untent something you just wait for. It's something you build. But this is just the beginning. In our next episode, we explore an even more audacious and strategic project, the Pinglu Canal. This canal of the century is being built to redefine the economy of southwest China, giving it a new, direct path to the sea. How will this massive waterway alter the very structure of the nation? What groundbreaking technologies are involved? And why are some comparing it to something out of a science fiction movie? Join us next time as we decode the Pinglu Canela project that showcases the wonders, controversies, and monumental ambition of modern China.